Wow, Christmas was awesome. It was really special. I don't know about you guys, but it was different. What is up? And welcome to SoCal's Kids. This is Sunday, and you're watching our Sunday video. <sighs> Christmas is over. You know that feeling when Christmas is over, and you're kind of like, oh, a little bit sad, because it's gone. We got New Year's coming up in just a few days. That's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys get together with family. Hopefully, we can do that safely this year. But Christmas is over, but there's still some more to remember, right? There's still more things, because the reality is, all the time is Christmas time for us because Jesus was born and he saved us from our sins. So, today we're talking about peace, right? Jesus came and he brought peace. If you if you listen to the Christmas story and you hear the word peace a lot, honestly, you know, peace, goodwill, joy to men, whatever, um, we hear the word peace a lot, but what exactly does that mean? You know, it could mean so many different things. Who knows? So, for you guys today, let's dive into what peace means. Let's see about that. But first, as always, we've got a fun game. So, pause the video here if you need to. Go grab a cup, a plastic cup, uh, not a glass one for sure. Um, it can be like a red like plastic cup or like a, a, a cup that's not going to break, right? So go grab one of those and get with your family, right? You need one cup for every two people, okay? So if there's four of you, you need two cups, okay? But go grab someone and we'll play this game. So unpause it when you're ready and we'll go. So if you've ever heard of the game Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Cups, you're in for a treat. What is up, So Hills Kids, and what is up, students in service right now. Remember, we're doing both. Tyler Clot Filter, hello. Called you out last week. I'm sorry. Ellie, I think you're back there. Micah and Kayla, maybe. Who knows? But you guys at home as well, we're all playing the same game today. So let's have some fun with it. We're playing a game called Head, Shoulders, Knees, Cup. So if you've ever heard the song Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes, right? What do you have to do? You have to touch head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes, right? Well, you have to do that. So I'm going to say a part of the body, right? Head, shoulders, knees, or toes. And you have to touch that part of your body. But here's the catch. In between you and your opponent is going to be a cup. And when I say cup, the first person to grab the cup wins, okay? So in the room, if you're playing in the room, right, on Sunday together, if you don't grab the cup, you're out. And if you do have the cup, you have to find somebody else who grabbed the cup and play, right? Last man standing wins. If you're at home, just play as many rounds as you want. See who gets the most wins together, okay? So we're going to start. Remember, when I say cup, you grab the cup. If you grab the cup before I say cup, you're out. Sorry. So last man standing in church. Catch your points up at home. Let's go. You ready? Head, shoulders, knees, toes, knees. Toes, heads, cup. Bet there's a lot of noise going on right now. I don't know about you guys, but half the room just got eliminated, and you kids might have just beat your parents at home. Ooh. All right, let's do another round, okay? Shake it off. Ah, you got it, okay. Head, cup. Ooh, you weren't expecting that switch up, were you? Sorry, I had to do it to y'all. So, another half of the room is out. Let's do another one. Head, shoulders, toes, 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 shoulders, head, knees, shoulders, 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 head, cup. Sorry to hit you with that delay, but go ahead and find another partner if you can. There should be dwindling numbers there. You guys at home, how's it going? How's the score stacking up? We'll see. We'll do three more rounds, and then we'll be done. If you are in church still, and there's still people left, do a tiebreaker. Figure it out. But let's go. Round one. Head. Shoulders. Knees. Cut. Went fast on you. Hope you guys did well. It's getting intense. I hope there's some antsy energy in the room, okay? Two more to go. You ready? Head. Toes, knees, toes, head, shoulders, toes, knees, head, shoulders, cup, toes, knees. Did you hear it? I said it about three ago. If you didn't, cup, grab it. Ooh. Okay. This is the finals, okay? 
Whoever wins this one wins at home. If you're tired or whatever, like this is intense, okay? We got this, okay? Limber up, stretch if you need to, get that hand ready to go. All right, you ready? You gotta go fast. Head, toes, knees, shoulders, toes, head, shoulders, knees, toes, head, shoulders, knees, 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 shoulder, head, cup. <sighs> Hope you guys did well. I don't know how it went. Uh, I'll see y'all in person Sunday, but hope you guys had fun with that. And let's dive in, figure out what we've got going on. Hey guys, it is Meredith here, and I hope you really enjoyed that game. Um, so next we're going to be talking about peace. And peace is a word that we kind of hear around Christmas a lot, right? So what does peace mean to you? See, in 2020, I think it was a little hard to find peace sometimes. Um, and so it's kind of hard to see it and understand what it is. Um, so with 2020 and finding peace, is there a solution to this? Is there a way we can learn about it? Um, so we are actually going to move on and read a story about it and learn if there is a solution. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let us you guys but it's a great song after Christmas too because joy to the world the Lord has come right he did come and he died and he saved us so that's exactly what we're talking about this week you see we've been talking about Jesus's birth right first we talked about Mary and what that looked like and her choice and her boldness um, and then you know we heard about her journey all the way to Bethlehem and how kind of uneventful it was but how her willingness to surrender right her willingness to sacrifice ended up paying off huge in the end 
Today, we're talking about some other things, right? What about our plans, right? How do we respond when our plans don't go our way, right? How do we respond when Christmas morning wasn't the same this year? When I didn't get to see my grandparents, or I didn't get to see my extended friends or family, right? What do we do then? We didn't get the present we wanted, or my brothers or sisters were still annoying on Christmas, even though it was Christmas, or your Lego set got destroyed by your little brother, been there, done that. But what do we do when plans change, right? Well, we've got a story, as always, and it's about peace. So, today we're talking about the shepherds, right? They're, they're an important part of the, the story of Jesus. So we're going to talk about them. Now, outside of Bethlehem were shepherds, right? They're probably a little bit out of the way, and they're watching their sheep, because that's what shepherds do. They make sure that sheep stay together, that they do what they're supposed to, and... I mean, they're probably just kicking it, right? It's probably a group of them like, ha ha, sheep, because it's a normal night for everyone, right? Nobody knows that the Savior of the world is being born. So they're just chilling, hanging out, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> bright lights. Now, here's the thing that's, that you have to imagine, right? Is back then, they didn't have electricity. So if you've ever seen stadium lights, you know, that shine down, or city lights or whatever, we're kind of used to bright lights at night, right? That's just kind of with electricity and all that. We can imagine. But imagine there's no light bulbs in the world and there's no electricity. Light doesn't just come out of nowhere. Maybe a candle, but not like that. So at night, can you imagine? You've never seen light like this and then boom, light. And you're like, oh my goodness, what is that? And well, then they heard voices, which just makes it even more scary. Can you imagine? You're sitting there just in the dark, looking up at the sky, and there's ah! bright lights and voices, and it's crazy. And so, we're going to read what happened. So, we're turning to Luke. We've been in Luke all month. And so, Luke chapter 10, or chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. We'll jump into it. It says, but an angel reassured them, don't be afraid. So remember, they're probably terrified. Random lights, angels singing, not an everyday occurrence. So he said, don't be afraid. Um, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born in Bethlehem, the city of David. I don't know about you guys. But that's kind of a big deal, right? These people have been waiting hundreds of years for this Messiah. And who does the angels come to? Yeah, shepherds. Now, here's a little fact about shepherds. They were kind of the lowest rung of society, right? Like, they didn't get paid a lot. People didn't really like them. They got treated poorly. But who did the angels come to first? That's right, the shepherds. And then they kept on going, right? So jumping to verse 14, all of the angels said, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Peace on earth. So what does that mean, right? What does peace on earth mean? And how do we get that peace on earth? Because... I don't know if you've looked around, but it's kind of anything but peaceful. So, let's keep on going with the story. The uh, shepherds actually just hurried off, right? They left their sheep. Hope they're fine. Um, but they went and found Jesus, right? And so, right here, chapter 2, verse 20, boop, 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 it says, The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. So, the shepherds went in and found Jesus, and then they went and told everybody about Jesus, and then they went back to their flocks, celebrating and glorifying God. So, what can we learn about that? Well, let's talk about it. There's a lot to worry about. Am I right? The shepherds could have been worried about their sheep, right? Worried about what people would think about them. 
worried about being crazy, right? Or seeing things, but they didn't. They trusted. Just like us, we have a lot to worry about. We've got a pandemic going on. A little bit of worry. But you know what? God works through that, right? Maybe our grades. We're stuck online learning like half the time. We can't even go to school. And then when we are in school, we just kind of sit there at our desks. And our grades aren't doing well. And we can't focus because learning is weird. And it's another thing, right? Another thing to worry about. Maybe our family and our friends we worry about, or whatever's going on in the world, or craziness, it seems like it's all falling apart, doesn't it? But we have hope, because God revealed his plan, right? Christmas is God's revelation of his plan. So, let's jump into the memory verse one more time for this month, and then we'll talk about what this plan exactly is. That was another memory verse for this month of December. Okay, this month we're in Luke, so I'm going to go ahead and start teaching you guys the new memory verse motion and words. All right, so first part is today, today, in the town of David. We're going to bring our fingertips together twice. So today in the town of David, a Savior, we're going to lift our hands up to him, and then a Savior has been born. We're going to cradle our arms together. And then, oh, Savior has been born to you. We're going to point to everyone else, okay? Alrighty. Let's smush it together. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. Alright, that's our first part. Let's hop on to our second part. Alright. He is the Messiah. We're going to put three fingers together. We're going to start at our shoulder and we're going to bring them down to our waist. And then the next is Lord, the Lord. So just how we usually make our hand motion for the Lord, we're going to make an L. We're going to put it at our top shoulder and we're going to bring it down to our waist, just like we did with Messiah. All right. And that's in Luke 2 11. So can we try it together? Let's try it together. All right. So today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke 2, 11. Alrighty, good job you guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks once again, Haley, as always. Did great, love those videos. Um, so, like I said, we're talking about peace, right? And the angel said, right, Jesus came to bring peace. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. So, what does that look like? Because you see, things happen to us that we don't like. We get stuck inside for a whole summer. Our entire 2020 year has changed. Life as we know it is different forever, right? And we're stuck in the middle of it. You know... Like, if you're in your history class and you read about something crazy that happened in history, and you realize we're living in that right now. We're living in a crazy time of history. So how can we find peace? Well, we can trust God, right? The shepherds trusted God. They trusted the angels he sent to tell them the good news of Jesus. They followed their instructions, they found Jesus, and they celebrated, right? Because they trusted and they believed. So how can we know peace? We can trust in that same story, right? We can trust that God sent Jesus his son. We can trust that Jesus came to die for our sins on the cross, and he did it. And he rose again three days later. And because of that, we can trust in who Jesus is, right? We can be confident. And we can believe in him because he works through us and he does things through us and he grows us and he helps us understand and learn he really makes a difference so when things seem crazy right when things are chaotic when they're hard to understand we can know that god has a plan for us right god had a plan for jesus God had a plan for Mary and Joseph. God had a plan for the shepherds. 
He has a plan for all the characters in the Bible. He has a plan for you, too. So instead of worrying about all that could happen, instead of being stressed about what's going to come next, you can be confident and you can trust in who Jesus is, right? Because when we're confident and we trust, we can have peace, right? Just like we trust in our parents. We trust in them to give us clothes and give us food and do our laundry. And so we have peace about those everyday things. The same is true for Jesus. When we trust him with our life, he brings peace. So, that's all for today. <laughs>